Hello and welcome to today's streaming and today we're going to talk about decoupling. We're going to talk about how we can better design our, our, our React apps so that its components are not coupled with each other or at least um, we reduce the amount of coupling between the components. Um, how we can achieve that, what are some, some of the considerations we need to have in mind? Um, and what is the extent that we can actually accomplish that? Can also be the case that sometimes we will have things that just need to live together and that's fine. Okay, it's not a problem, but we want to aim at um, having as little coupling as possible. We will work on what we have done in the previous video we're going to try to separate what we have implemented into more independent components. Before we start today's streaming, I think it makes sense to give a heads up to everyone who is watching this. Uh, if you are aware of the, the, the crisis in Ukraine, then and if you are in a position to help, uh, make sure to do so. I'm sure that there is one way or another that you can reach either some government donation funds or some uh, NGO donation funds that you can contribute to. Um, we follow the situation closely here in Europe and it's not an easy one. So if you are in a position to contribute and to help them, make sure to do so. That being said, I think we can start with today's discussion gonna switch to my desktop and here it is so the agenda for today is actually to be honest the previous streamings um, with roughly one hour and a half almost two hours it's a little bit heavy on me uh, I'm gonna try to make it a little bit shorter so one hour maybe one hour twice a week is better than one and a half hours once a week so let's see I'm gonna give it a try I'm still experimenting with this format and please Bear with me, <laughs> uh, we're going to find something that will work fine for everyone. So we'll start by just with some introduction and then we'll get some work done. Okay, so where did we stop? Let me open here my IDE. And at the end of the previous streaming, we ended up with this component. I'm just going to clear this and I'm going to start everything. Um, this is the Git repository. I should actually put a link in the description um, that, that will make things easier for you, I think. Um, here, we just have a very simple component and whatever, whenever we click on create, then we add this form contents to um, our uh, list here at the bottom, right? So nothing really fancy. Uh, it will get fancier, I promise, but uh, bear with me. I think we need to cover the basics first so that we are in a good place to um, scale our application more quickly afterwards. So we have an item description for whatever is in the form. We have a list of items and whenever we change something in the input, we will update this item description. And whenever we click on that button, we will um, add whatever content is in the item description to the list of items and we will set the item description to an empty string. Okay, then here at the bottom, all we do is just iterate over the items and for each item, we produce an element on the list. Okay, so this is what we did so far and that actually has quite a few issues with coupling, even though it's such a small and such a basic component, there is so much we can learn from this. And what we will learn today, we can actually apply to larger, um, more complex scenarios, right? So let me come back here to, to my browser and to the discussion. First one is what are some of the problems with our implementation? So I put a little list here and the first one is about multiple responsibilities. If we look at this component, it has two responsibilities together in one component. Oops, what was that? Um, yeah, the first responsibility is managing the form. So the first responsibility is related to this upper part here. The second responsibility at the bottom refers to rendering and showing the list, which is the second, the bottom part here. Now, 
These are two very distinct responsibilities and here, even though we are using some local state, we would want to keep these things decoupled, okay? Because probably the form, basically because the form has nothing to do with the list, okay? They are completely independent, they should be independent. So that's the first thing that we want to fix. And the second thing is that we are coupled to a specific state solution. This is, this is important, okay? Very important. Uh, because this is a very subtle type of coupling. It's, it's something that if we are not aware of our development and we are not constantly questioning our solution, we will do that without even noticing and we will introduce couple all over the, coupling all over the place and later on changing that is complicated. So what do I mean by that? First, we have this line here. Now, this line creates a state Okay, so a piece of information that lives beyond the, let's say, render life cycle of this component. If, I, if the terms are too complex, if you didn't get anything, you will get it in the next video. Okay, <laughs> because in the next video, I'm going to talk about the internals of React. So what happens behind the scenes? What is a render? Why do we need this use state thing to actually persist a piece of information in React and to, to actually update our views once we change this piece of information? Why do we need these things? And how does React manage everything behind the scenes? That's the topic for Thursday. If you don't want to miss that, then make sure to follow the channel closely. And that video is going to be pretty neat, I hope. Right? Maybe I can screw things up. I'm, I'm live, so... <laughs> um, Hopefully not. Anyway, we expose here two pieces of information which are directly coupled to the use state. If I change the use state, if I want to use whatever other solution, what is exposed to me is different. So this is a very specific piece of implementation and it's used all over the place. It's used here with the set item description. Um, it's used here with the set items, right? It's used here whenever we iterate over the items. It's used all over the place. So if I wanted to change that, I would have to come to this component. And here is a super simple component. We need to change three or four lines of code or whatever. But if it was a way more complex component with other dependencies and network calls and whatever asynchronous execution, changing this can be a nightmare talking from personal experience. So this is the second thing, second really bad thing that we want to address when we decouple things in our components here. So these are the two main problems that I see with our implementation, apart from the fact it's, it's really ugly and doesn't add any value at the moment, but that is something that we need to build, right? We are building the value here. And I wrote down a few points. Why do we need to decouple stuff? So. When you think about it, what are the benefits of having software that is not tightly coupled together? And I think that um, we need to differentiate here between what, what you will find in the literature between coupling and cohesion. Okay. Um, I like to think it this way. Coupling is the, the dependencies or inter-module dependencies, right? So the dependencies that a module has on other modules, the dependency that a React component, for example, this component has on the state solution. This is coupling, right? Cohesion, on the other hand, is something good and it refers to intra-module dependencies. We want a module to encapsulate as much as possible as much knowledge related to a certain feature as, as possible. So <laughs> we want a module to encapsulate as much knowledge related to a certain feature as possible, right? <laughs> I, I hope I made myself clear. Uh, but this refers to cohesion. Everything within the module should relate to the functionality of that module. We don't want to have things inside of a module or inside of a React component that don't really relate to that component's functionality. So coupling is bad, cohesion is good, okay? Um, maybe in a later video I can talk more about it and we could go through some examples. I think, we'll, trust me, we'll have plenty of examples with this, this, 
this this little project it seems really naive but <laughs> you will see that it has a lot of a lot of cool things for us to to play around with cool so why do we need to decouple first thing is that we don't want to have to modify code when we add new features we want to add new features we want to extend our functionality by extending our code rather than modifying it why okay always ask the question why it's because Today, we use the use state hook. Tomorrow, we use the use context solution. The day after tomorrow, we use some API call solution. And the day after, the day after tomorrow, we want to go back to use state. Now, <laughs> let's say I'm just giving some crazy example, but you get the idea. If, if we need to always modify the code, whenever we need to change a certain, a certain behavior or certain solution, then we are going a lot in circular uh, circles and we are making very little progress towards actually achieving our goal. Much of our work is to undo what has been done before because we were using another solution and building what we need to build some boilerplate or whatever for the new solution. If we could isolate that so that whenever we need something new, we don't need to destruct what we have done so far, but we can just add to the code base, this would be amazing, right? Because if we need to revert something or if we need to reuse something, we still have um, that feature out there. We still have that piece of code out there. So that's one thing why we want to decouple. Second one is that we want to create more testable solutions. Here's one example. So this component here that you're looking at, let's have a look at the tests. A good thing that we have tests at least, right? We have three tests. I can um, collapse these things and we have three tests. We have should correctly display the created item. We have the should not add an empty item description and we should allow the user to create items with the same description. Cool. But what happens if within my app.tx app.tsx file here, when I am adding a new item, let's say this little function here later on, I change this to an API call and that API call, I want to test what happens when that specific API call throws uh, an error and blows up my code. How do I test it? It's not so easy to test. So um, we could do some work around and uh, mock the, the network request and so on and so forth. But by breaking things up, by having less coupled solutions, we can actually pass much of the behavior to our React components via props. And whenever we pass things via props, then we can, we can, for example, in one of the test scenarios, we can simply pass a function which always throws an error. So we can test how the component reacts to the function whenever it throws an error. This kind of thing um, refers to, to more testable solutions. Another thing is information hiding and basically information hiding is, is a term that uh, I read first on a book called A Philosophy of Software Design. The link is on the description. And this refers to how much of my functionality, of the functionality of my module, I am exposing to the external world. The more information hidden, the better, right? So, um, I don't really want to expose a lot of information about it. I don't want to expose a lot of information about my, let's say, I don't want to expose a lot of the behavior of my form handling to the list component. It doesn't matter, but here they are by default exposed to one another. So information hiding is one thing that, that we could use to, to argue that it makes sense or that it is, there is a benefit in decoupling here. And last but not least, and this is not an exhaustive list, by the way, there are other solutions here that are, there are other arguments here that you would use um, for um, that, wait, <laughs> there are more benefits from decoupling, which are not listed here. Um, but the last thing came, that came to my mind is about hidden dependencies between different components. And the fact that this brings higher confidence when we're implementing changes. For example, here, the button component, 
the set items behavior is coupled to the list component. There is a coupling between the components here, which is not clear, right? It, it's not a direct, you, you have to go through the code and understand what is what to identify this coupling. Um, this causes or this decreases the confidence whenever we are changing something in our form because this may impact our list component. We don't want that, right? So this is another benefit of decoupling. Cool. So this was what I actually had to say. And I am happy if you have any, any other comments, any other suggestions or any uh, suggestions, maybe, I don't know, but um, situations, right? And um, applications where you saw that decoupling um, different pieces, different components of our code actually brought many benefits. Now, the work that we're going to do today <laughs> is a lot of work. It's not just a little bit of work because by decoupling, we can actually achieve a much, as I said, a much more testable solution. And this is what we will do. Um, this will enable us to add more tests to our solution and therefore have better tested components. Okay. So we're going to start by structuring our files and folders. I'm going to come back here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this, um, um, let's say this structure where the component is directly rendered under the app. Now, if you look online, you will find, um, different approaches to how to structure our files in react applications. The one I like the least, okay. The one I like the least is when you group your files by what they are. So, <laughs> um, okay. That maybe that makes like, it would be the most intuitive, but what I mean is you have a folder called components. You have a folder called hooks. You have a folder called pages right folder called pages. Okay, cool. What happens when I open this application or someone new opens this application, they look at this folder structure and they have no idea what they're dealing with. They have no idea what the app does. They have no idea what the domains of the app are. Um, from my perspective, and um, I'm going to try here. I'm also trying, I'm also experimenting, but from my perspective, what is, um, what makes more sense for us is to have folders according to the features, functionalities of our application. Okay. So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to create a top level folder here called tasks. Now this folder, the name may change. It doesn't matter. Um, this type of refactoring is a cheap refactoring when you change the name of a folder. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to obsess over it. We could have another folder called projects, right? So we would have projects and tasks. And then within each of these, um, folders, then I'm going to have my components folder. Now, now it's okay because now I know that I am within the tasks domain and I know that my app does something with tasks, right? So within the components here, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call this file a, um, let's see, create task or tasks.tsx, right? So this is going to be the equivalent of my app.tsx, just going to contain the exact same code. So before I go any further, I'm going to create the test file and I'm going to stop this and I'm going to start with the test watch comment. Now give it a couple of seconds and let's see what's going to say. So nothing new here. There are no changes. Actually, there is one failing because uh, this, this is an empty test, but um, there are no changes regarding the um, components or the tests which exist here. So what we're going to do is we're going to update. First thing we're going to update, we're going to remove this whole thing from here. Um, actually, hmm, yeah, but I think we can remove it from here because um, then we are not, we're simply not going to have a app.test.file. Okay. I'm going to paste this here and I'm going to change this to tasks from dot, 
Oops, maybe it would make more sense for me to do a renaming here. Tasks, there you go. Uh, and I'm gonna import this from tasks, right? Uh, tasks doesn't expose anything yet or doesn't export anything yet. So I'm just gonna copy this from here. And maybe, yeah, is that fine? I'm gonna leave it like so. I'm just gonna copy instead of cutting and pasting and then I'm gonna paste it here. And instead of app, I'm gonna export tasks, right? Um, this is duplicated stuff. So um, I'm just gonna save this. Now the app.tsx file is gonna fail because this doesn't work. Okay, this is complaining because Jest is not very uh, smart regarding whenever you create new modules. I'll stop this. Let me just delete this file. And app.tsx file, I'm just gonna delete everything. Okay, so it's a completely empty solution here. There you go, something like this and maybe this complaining because it's defined but never used so here we can just return a simple um, react fragment or a div for that matter okay and there you go okay so now i can start it again it takes a little bit but the tests are passing, right? So here, uh, there's no problem. Like we will fix this during the implementation of today's today's video. Uh, this just refers to the key element here. And because I'm using the item itself, then in the test, I have two first items. So um, this is the error that we're getting. We're gonna fix that by introducing IDs today. Um, cool. So. Here now in my app, I'm just returning a div and my tasks dot, uh, my task component is still working as expected. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do apart from that, actually, um, maybe I could even commit this. Um, let's see what's going to happen when I run lint and when I run, when I run the format, I think that should be, everything should be in order. So ideally you would want to commit your things as much as possible or um, in smaller chunks, right? As small chunks as possible so that you can um, revert if you break something. And and here for the sake of having exactly the same um, behavior as before, I'm going to simply render the tasks component on the screen. So within the components, I'm going to create an index.ts file. Why am I creating an index.ts file? Because I'm going to use this to export only the things that the external world should be aware of. Okay. I'm going to try as much as possible uh, not to import anything from within the top level folder, but just from the top level folder itself. And then here we will also create an index.ts file by exporting tasks from dot components, right? So now here you can think about it this way re regarding what we talked about, about um, deep modules. The only thing that the tasks module here, the tasks folder, so the module is exposing is a tasks component. Okay. And now here I can actually import this from tasks. And if I save, then it should fix. Yeah, because uh, it was annoying me last time that didn't automatically format the files, but now it is. So let's just give it a, a try and it seems to be working just fine. Okay, cool. So we can format things now. I'm gonna stop this again. Um, you see the new files here, git add, commit. Um, we're gonna say refactor, work in progress. Um, decouple tasks component, right? It's gonna run all the checks and let me just make sure that we don't have any changes. No, we don't, it's up to date. Okay, so now we have our app um, rendering the task. So now we can go back into the module and we can continue working in the tasks component. So. First thing that I want to do is this, as, as we discussed already, this has two responsibilities, right? It has a form responsibility and it has a list responsibility. I want to split these two things. So 
I will create a create task.test.tsx first. And I'm going to describe this as being tests the create task component, right? There's going to be a function, which I will make an arrow function just for the sake of consistency. And because it's, I just prefer it, no specific reason for that. Um, and here I would actually try to add a couple of tests, which will make or which I'm aiming for. Okay. I'm not going to write them yet, but I'm just going to write them as a description. So the first one here is that it should trigger the on submit function with a valid input. Okay. And if I come here to the implementation of the, the current tasks component, the on submit function would be this function. Okay. So it's just a function that is triggered whenever I click on the button, the on submit is going to be a prop and we don't have it yet. Okay. So just bear with me for a while. We will get it soon. The second one is that it should not, right? So the, the opposite of this should not trigger the on submit function when the input is invalid. Now the definition of an invalid input is something that we need to work on. And I don't plan to complete it today because it's something that will evolve with the software. Okay. Um, just don't worry too much about it, but we will, we will use, try to use this, um, um, test here to capture all the characteristics of an invalid input. Okay. Um, the next test that we want to have here is that it should clear the task title upon submission with a valid task input, right? So this is another, um, requirement that we would like to have in our component. And the other one that we would have is that it should not clear the task title upon or it should, it should not, um, uh, trigger the task, uh, the, the task should not clear. It's hard to speak today. It should not clear the task title. If the task creation cannot be successfully completed, right? So if for whatever reason, I'm not able to complete the, 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 um, the creation of this task, then um, it should not clear the title. We don't want to lose the input data. Okay. So let's start with the first one here. And the first one is we're going to set up our user. So that's user event dot setup. I'm not sure whether we will need the user, but I think, yes, we will need the user because I'm thinking here um, we're going to need it. So now we're going to have render and the render here is going to receive our create tasks. A task component and this is enough to make our tests blow up okay so now we are we have the the failing test and this is failing because there is no create task component so I'll come here I'm gonna create a new file create task dot tsx and what I'm gonna do here is I'll simply export const create task is a function component which returns at the moment just an empty div. Now this should be enough for my test to pass. All right. So this let's see here. Uh, pa, 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 okay. Let me rerun it because again, I created a new file. So just is not very, um, it doesn't always pick the creation of new files. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, of course I'm not importing it. So <laughs> it's not going to pass. Yeah. Um, let's now import this. So there we go. Let's see what happens now. Perfect. Now it's passing. Okay. Now, of course, this is not our desired uh, behavior, right? And here it's saying that I should import react from react. And here I should also import react from react. Okay. Now it's happy. Um, and we can continue with our setup. So now, uh, what I would like to do is that it should trigger the on submit function with a valid input. So 
what do I mean by, by should trigger a, a on submit function with a valid input? It simply means that now I'll have my user and I need to use the await user.click. And this is very similar to what we did before on the screen dot get by uh, row, right? And this screen should be imported from here. It's not important, but it should be important from here. Screen dot get by row. And that's going to be the text box. Uh, and then I'm gonna await until this this happens and for the await I actually need an async function So I need to actually transform all the little functions here to async and async And async again um, Cool, so now I would also await user dot keyboard and that will be my first task and then I would await user dot click on the screen dot get by row button right so now um what happens here is oops things are failing and it's not finding a text box right and that's because i'm not rendering anything at the moment within our create task component it's just an empty div so i'm going to come here within the tasks and i'm going to cut extract this I'm gonna extract whatever piece of information I have related to my form and I'm gonna place it here in my create task component that's where the fun really starts when we have to go and start um, splitting things up so I'm gonna remove this all the button here and so on and so forth and I'm gonna return it here okay like so now I cannot return to child, um, so I cannot return to siblings in React. React requires us to return only one top level component. So I'm gonna wrap these things up in a form and I'm gonna um, cancel out the behavior of the form by simply say e.prevent default, right? So now here, I'll just save this for formatting. Things are still blowing up because there is no set items here. So this is the key for uh, breaking this component up before we could directly call this in whatever component we were working here and you see that everything is breaking that's the wonder of tests this why they are so good because they tell you whatever you do that breaks them you get some red warning on your face uh, that's annoying but it really helps you make sure that what was working before is working after you finish the refactoring okay that being said we need to get rid of this line here right it, it's not working it needs to somehow whenever i click on the button oops whenever i click on the button it needs to somehow trigger a certain update function that will then itself take care of of the um, uh, updating the items in our list so here i don't need to have anything i don't i don't care about the way that this list is stored. The only thing I need to receive here is a function to that that's going to be submitted, that's going to be called whenever I press on the button. And for that, I'm just going to define a type. And I, I, I like to follow the convention of defining props by saying the name of the component and then the props. And there will be a simple on submit uh, function. And this function will receive a string, right? So that's going to be our task. The task is going to be a string and it's going to return void. And here we could actually make it even more realistic and say a promise void or void. Um, but for the for the sake now we're going to just stick with promise. Why is it so? Because um, if it returns synchronous stuff, it's okay. Doesn't matter. It's not going to change anything. But if it, later on we want this function to be asynchronous, um, then maybe we want to use some await here and and then um, that is. We are already planning for that little bit in advance okay so here this is a function component and this is how i tell in typescript that this component here is a react function component and this will by itself already allow me to to call the on submit uh, or to use the on submit function here via destructuring right because the props is an object so via destructuring i get access to this on submit and then I can simply call here on submit with the item description. Okay. And this allows me 
to decouple and I'm adding the await here. Here it is really superfluous. It doesn't matter. Okay, I can call it a sync here. Um, it doesn't matter because the whole code of on submit for now is going to be synchronous. It's not going to be async. It's going to be sync. Uh, so the await doesn't play a role here. But whenever we have a network calls, whenever we have something that is um, that that is not synchronous, then the await is going to be important because we want to make sure that we wait for this to, to finish, doesn't throw any error before we actually clear the description. Okay, here I'm gonna do a little bit of refactoring as well. I'm gonna change this to task title so that because we also know later on, we wanna have more than the, just the task title, wanna have the start time, the end time, wanna have other stuff. So um, I'm just gonna keep it consistent for now. Little refactorings that also help us. Okay, so I saved this, everything is still breaking, but I have a testable component. Okay, now if I come back here to the task, you see that I have the on submit function is failing. Now, if I were to call on submit like so, um, and here that should be a promise, right? So that, that should actually be um, maybe new promise, like so. And the executor is just gonna return an undefined, I think. Is that happy? Yes, that makes it happy. Let's see what's going to be the result here of this test. Okay. And you see that this test is not failing anymore. So our component is actually working okay. Like it, it, it's not breaking and now it accepts our on submit function. What is breaking here is the um, um, the tasks component. So the tests for this task component are breaking because the tasks component is broken. Okay. So um, let's then finish up this refactoring here and then we will try to fix up the tests component or the tasks. Ah, it's hard to say that, it's hard to differentiate. Okay. So last thing that I want to do here is I don't really want, so wh what I'm trying to measure is whether this function here is being triggered. Now, how do I do that with Jest? How do I do that? I simply assign a certain on submit function to Jest.fn. Now, this allows us to track how many times this function has been called. Okay. And I'm just going to pass it here. This is what would be, a th I think it's a mock. Uh, yeah, it's not a stub. I think it's a mock, but um, you know, definition is so fuzzy these days. I mean, you should use these things as little as possible. Okay. Basically as little as possible. Um, in this context, it does make sense for us to test whether the function is triggered because we don't know what the function is going to look like, but we want to make sure that this function is triggered whenever we run a series of, um, user steps. So now here I would like to expect this on submit function to have been called one time like so right so very straightforward i'm going to save this and let's see if we can make this test pass or if it is still passing so yep it's still passing perfect now here it should not trigger the on submit function why when the input is invalid so that's very similar to the test above what i'm going to do is copy paste right now this is not Okay, you could argue this is a duplication. I will tell you it's not. Okay, no matter what you say, I'm gonna keep doing this. So uh, don't get super mad at me. The point here is that we are in different contexts and the tests look the same because they are similar in nature. But here, I wanna make sure that I am uh, testing a very specific behavior that this function should not be called, right? So if I were to copy and paste, like, and try to isolate or try to, to centralize some of the duplicated code, I'm not focusing on the right thing. I, I really like one quote, actually, the book is here next to me, is this one. Oops, can you see it? Pragmatic Programmer. Um, it's really cool <laughs> and really recommend it. But the, um, what they say about duplication is they, they talk about, um, the application of knowledge, not the application of code. You should focus on not duplicating knowledge across your code. 
or across your code base. If it so happens that by chance two pieces of code look the same, but they refer to two different contexts, two different functionalities, this is not application. It's just coincidence. It just so happens that they look the same. But if you are duplicating knowledge intentionally on your code, then this is something you should be more, more careful about. Okay, so here um, for us, the invalid input is basically an empty input, right? So I'm just gonna um, not trigger anything. And in this case, now this test should fail, okay? So I'm just trying to directly click on the button and it should have one test passing and um, another one failing here. And let me see exactly. So here you see that this is failing because it's being called, but uh, or we are expecting it to be called, but it's not being called because the truth is we should expect it not to be called. Okay, that's a bit confusing. But the idea here is that if the input is valid, I should not call the function on submit. I don't want to submit. I don't want to create anything if the input is invalid. Okay. So with this, I think that our test, this test should be passing. Now I'm going to go to the next test. which is that it should clear the title upon submission with a valid task input. So now here, once I click on the submit and here, I don't really need anything else anymore. So I'm not going to use the, does it work like this? No, it has to be a function, right? So like, so I don't need the on submit. And here I would just expect the screen dot get by role text box uh, to have value of an empty string. I'm going to save this and let's see what's going to happen. And I think it should be passing. Exactly. So does it? Oh, no, it doesn't. Um, why is it so? Let's have a look. Maybe, uh, okay. I think I, I, I can try something a little bit different. Um, let me try to, eh, I'm curious about it. Let me try to, to do something a little bit different here. I'm gonna, um, assign this to, to the component. So that's, that's going to be my task title. And this is going to be screen dot get by row text box, right? So now, uh, ah, okay. Maybe, maybe, you know, what's the problem? Hold on a second. I don't think that we need anything here. Um, we could actually just add the resolve and then simply here, I'm going to resolve with undefined. Let's see if that's going to cause, uh, if that's going to make things work. I'm curious about it, by the way, because you know, perfect. So that was the problem. Now it's passing, right? Then we are failing again on the tests. Yeah. Um, so promises are something that, you know, <laughs> you work with it on a daily basis, but you forget a little bit how to implement stuff. Uh, here I should pass a, whatever, whenever I have to the, whenever I create my promise, I should create a, um, it with a proper executor. Um, and then here I'm just going to pass the resolve and immediately resolve this uh, to undefined, right? This would be the case whenever you make an asynchronous call and then you receive the value, you would resolve with that value. And if there are any errors, you could reject with a, a nice message, right? You have possibility of having reject here if you want as well. But for us, just resolve works fine. So here we don't need to change anything. And the last thing is that it should not clear the task title if the task creation cannot be successfully completed. So very similar here. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it here. And here within my... Um, promise, I will actually mm, probably throw an error. Let's say reject here, All right? So the resolve is not going to be used, but the reject is going to be used. And I'm going to reject this with uh, whatever reason, no reason. Let's see what's going to happen because I think this is going to throw something, but it's not really what we want. Let me see if I'm right. I'm curious about it. 
Perfect, right? So we still have here first task and actually we would want here to have first task, right? So this, this is correct. Um, but I'm curious whether it's throwing it or not exactly. So it's throwing something here. Um, let me see if um, this will still pass. So we still have the test failing, right? Even though we have the first task here, we still have the test failing. And the problem, the very nice problem, um, is that within my task, I don't, or within my create task component, I don't do any error handling. So here, ideally, I should do some error handling because um, <laughs> there is another thing very nice in the, the book of philosophy of software design which talks about defining errors out of existence that your user should not really be aware of most of the errors that happen in the system the system should handle them by itself now here i don't want to throw an error out of this component if there is something wrong here maybe later on i want to show a nice error message or a little i don't know red border or something but the component should handle stuff by itself it should not throw an error and break the whole application so Instead of doing it like this, I'm gonna just wrap things up in a try statement. If the on submit thing, so if the, fu the, the, the function call goes through, then it's gonna clear the title. If it doesn't go through, it's not gonna clear the title. And I'm gonna catch this and I'm just gonna comment this with a no op that simply says it's, it's, there, there is nothing to do here if there is an error. Just, just, just keep going, like it's fine, you know? Um, so now here, if you look at the bottom, then you will see that we have the test is, is passing, right? The fourth test is passing and we're back to only the tasks failing here. So this is a way, and this is one of the benefits of having this decoupling and passing things around via props, that we can actually, now we can explicitly pass a function that will always throw an error, that will always reject the promise. This is amazing because it gives us a very strong a testing possibility and it allows us to, to, to simulate behavior much better. Okay, so we are done with the create task component. And before we commit, because remember, we should not commit broken code. So let's fix up this component here to make sure that we can, um, that we can have the, our, our tasks component working. Now here we can leverage our create task uh, component that we just implemented and that the on submit function here is going to be our old little new promise right this is an executor it receives a resolve there will be no reject because we cannot really throw an error here and then we're gonna say set items and the set items will have our old items and then our new and here we actually need to receive the new item and the new item is a string and then it will add the new item at the end like so i'm gonna save this uh, and it's missing the resolve here with undefined okay so it just doesn't return anything my promise just resolves without anything um, or without giving any value back and then see how beautiful it is all the tests are passing everything is working as expected we come back to the browser we check it a little bit oops what is it is a ah i'm not i didn't start it right so where is it there we go that's a start and let's see what happens here beautiful it's working just fine if now i have test works just fine amazing this is a good point for us to commit our code because we have done some refactoring. We're just gonna do some cleanup here. So you see that now we have completely isolated the form behavior from the list behavior. And this is pretty cool. Now, there is still a little bit to do because this list here can also be isolated in its own component. And that's what we're gonna do next. So let me just com commit the code and we're gonna run a little bit beyond the uh, 7.30, but this is fun. I mean, let, let's just finish this up and I don't know you, but I have a lot of fun when doing this kind of stuff. So, um, cool. Let's add everything and let's use a nice flag dash P so that we can see everything we are adding. 
This is the first file. These are the tests here. That's in the create test. And then you type, yes, I want to commit this one. Then this is the new create test file. I also want to commit this one. Now you see how nice here I have removed all the form stuff and now I have just one component that handles everything and it exposes just one method. You need to give me just one method. I'm going to do everything else on my own. Um, perfect. So I have added everything and I'm going to commit this and I'm going to call this refactor still work in progress, extract, create task form. Okay. Hopefully that's going to pass. I don't know if everything is, um, is there may be some imports that I don't use, but no, I think it's fine. It's fine. Okay, cool. Um, now is a good time, <laughs> I think for us to take a five minute break. We're doing this for 50 minutes. So let's take a five minute break. We'll be back in five at seven twenty-five my time. So whatever your time is five minutes.
Hello and welcome back. So let's continue with our amazing refactoring here because that that's really fun, uh, at least for me, right? Um, if you're still with me until now, then that's also fun for you. So that's nice. Uh, cool. So quick recap. We have extracted, successfully extracted the create task component. And the next thing we want to do is we want to extract the tasks uh, or the task list component. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new component here or a new uh, test, right? So I'm going to call this task list, not test.tsx. The boilerplate here is pretty much the same, right? So we describe. I'm going to transform this into an arrow function. I will import react on the top. Nice. Eight piece of ham and now there's some in between my teeth. Nice information, right? So describe here tests the task list component and it should render a list with all the tasks. Very straightforward, um, no big deal here. And all I'm gonna do is I just need to render a task list, which doesn't exist yet, right? So here now I would like to import this from the testing library and let's work now on implementing our task list. So new component for us. Task list.tsx export const task list is again just an empty div for now, and that will be enough to make our tests pass. So I'm gonna import react from react, perfect. Export this, and then within here I can import. Oops. I can import this, and then our tests should be passing now. Let's see if just picked up the. Um, yeah, picked up. So that's nice. Cool. So, however, the problem here is that if I pass a certain um, amount of tasks, right, I would like to have them rendered on the screen. So I would like to have um, some tasks here, maybe let's say first task, like so. And the moment I try to run this, um, here I would actually then expect the screen dot get by text and this is nice because um, jest is also failing when you use that ts jest plugin it fails when typescript fails so the idea here is that i wouldn't even need this for now to actually be <laughs> tdd allows uh, would allow me to directly go and fix up the code so here i can define the type that's a task list props and here I will receive my tasks is going to be a list of strings. Now, this is a function component and this has a task list props as its um, its props type definition. Now, the test is not going to fail anymore, right? If I, um, how do I do that? Should I save it again? Is it going to pass? No, it's still not picking it up. Okay, so here I need to stop just and st start it again. Would be nice if they if they fix the bug. Um, that should pass. Perfect. So now here, the problem is that I would expect the screen dot get by text get by text for this first task uh, to be in the document, right? I would like to actually see this task in the document. And here you will see that this is not gonna work. It's just gonna break. So perfect, it fails. And now we can come here to tasks and we can beautifully extract this and paste it here. And now we are just gonna receive our tasks via the props here. And I'm gonna save this. Now the tests for tasks.tsx are going to fail, but the task list tests are going to pass. <laughs> okay, this pass, you see, like this, this passing, but this one's breaking, right? So cool, we have managed to transfer the information to this one. Now let's try to fix the problem here. And all we have to do here is simply say task list 
and then the tasks are just going to be our items here and that should be enough to actually make the tests pass. Yep, perfect. So they are passing and we still have this problem of the first key here. Okay, so we have successfully extracted the, the component here. Um, and now I think we can actually, we could, we could commit our code. Um, let's do so. Okay, let's commit our code because this, even though this is a small change, um, this is a change, right? So let me see if there is anything with the linting, but I don't think so. And let's go again, git add dot. Let's just give it a double check. And I'm going to commit with the refactor uh, work in progress, extract list um, task list component. Now we still have the tests passing and now I'm rerunning all the tests by pressing A. Um, but I still want to do a few refactorings here and then we are going to call the day. Okay. Um, first I want to fix this problem with the first item and how am I going to do that is, well, I cannot really use the item here. So I need, uh, I cannot use the description, right? And here it would be better if I were just to refactor this to task. So now we will do a few more interesting things. Um, first things first. Let's install a nice dependency, which is called UUID. And be careful to, to, to um, type it correctly. I'll actually add to the, to the Notion document which um, exact version I'm installing here. And it's important that you type it correctly because there are actually lots of attackers um, which publish very similar names. So for example, just one U for example, UID instead of UUID uh, or UUDI or UIUD, for example. So like all these uh, variations. Uh, and if you miss, uh, have a typo or something, you install a, a, um, um, like a bad, bad dependency and there are probably chances that they do that. You know, if they were not caught yet, um, the dependency was not flagged yet. Uh, it can be still a malicious uh, dependency and it can damage your software. So just make sure that whenever you're installing something, you're typing things correctly. And the other one that I want to install is a dev dependency and these are the types, right, for the, uh, for the UUID. So it doesn't ship yet with types, so we have to install it. Um, I'm going to put again these two um, dependencies in the description here in the Notion file as well, so that you can um, install the exact same versions that I'm using here. So first thing I'm going to do is here, I would like to have within my, um, function here, I would like to use the ID of a certain task to actually add it, uh, or use it as the key. And the ID is very useful in a sense, because later on, we're going to need IDs to delete and update tasks. So I'm going to create a new folder here, and it's going to be called the models, right? So it's a, this, uh, I'm just going to use to define the models of my, um, um, I define the models of my task. So here I'm just going to say task dot TS, and this is a simple, uh, model here. So let me have a look. Give me just one second. Yeah. Perfect. So here, uh, I'm going to export a type called task. And this type will simply be composed of an ID, which is a string and of a title, which is also a string. Uh, you could argue, okay, maybe you should use a class or something. Uh, and you have, you have a point there, um, because this is exposing and like, this is exposing the internal data structure of my task. This is not good, right? If title becomes new title, or if ID becomes underscore ID, then uh, this, this is not, not a good thing. So, um, maybe we could actually, we could uh, try to, let's have a look. I haven't tried it before, but, um, 
Yeah, why not, right? So here, we're gonna have a task and this task is gonna have a get or could just say get identifier, for example. And this identifier will return this.id. And I know that things here are not exactly as we would like them. And we would like to say a get title and this will return a this.title, right? So now we need to make this pass. We're gonna have a constructor and this constructor is gonna receive a task title for now. And the task title will be a string. And this is gonna say this. So I'm gonna define two, two, uh, two fields here. The first one's gonna be a private read only um, ID, which is gonna be a string. And the next one is gonna be a private. It's not gonna be just read only because I will change that later on but it's gonna be private title. It's also gonna be a string. Now we have these getters and um, probably setters later on. Uh, and this is not UI, sorry, that's ID. Sorry for the typo, there you go. And we're gonna say, uh, so what I was saying is we have these getters and setters here, probably we should have some setters later on. Uh, this is, yeah, um, it's good for information hiding. So there is some value here, but if we expose every single field of our task without any additional logic behind it, then I just don't see that much the point, but um, we will stick to, to best practices here and later on we will evaluate whether these are valuable or not. The get identifier is already one case where um, this would be a nice interface to have because for example, in MongoDB, you would have this dot underscore ID as your ID, or sometimes you have UUID as your ID. And this stable method, the get identifier, allows you to return whatever identifier you should be using. So now here, I'm just gonna say this.id is equal to, and here I need to import um, v4 as uuid v4, and that is from uuid. So this is gonna be uuid v4, and then this.title is task title, right? Um, I'm gonna save this and everything should still be working. I think, okay, yeah. Now here the idea is that I'm gonna receive a task instead of, um, and here I can actually create a new index file. So I like to have the index file because it explicitly allows me to, um, define what the external world should see, right? So I'm gonna say task from dot task. Um, I could say task model, not to confuse this with any other components, but then again, um, I think task is the most reasonable name. I'm just gonna import it like this. And as you can see here, now I'm having a few problems already. So here I have a task and this, I wanna use task dot get identifier. And here I want to use the test.getTitle, right? Like so, once I save this, I will still have problems because the task list, and if I come to the tests here in the component within the task list.tests, I should not receive something like this. So what I can do is I can simply say new task and pass my um, title here. So now this test should pass, but again, because there are some dependencies. And here you see what is the problem of dependencies, right? I mean, you change one thing, you have to change a lot of other stuff. So here you see that things are failing because uh, in my tasks.ts, um, so my component, the overall component here, um, we are not really passing, we are not following the necessary structure whenever we are passing the props. The task list requires an array of tasks, but here we are passing an array of strings. So we're going to change that. We're going to change that to task. And here I will do just a little bit of refactoring. I'm going to call this, oops, I'm going to call this tasks and I'm going to call set tasks. Perfect. So now here that would be the tasks. And then this would be new task with uh, the task title that is the new item, right? So this should be a better title. This should be new task title. And things seem to be working just fine. So let's see what's happening 
let's see what's the deal now is everything passing yes everything is passing perfect so now we have introduced the idea of a task right this is a class this is a, an object which we will encapsulate and and will contain all the logic related to managing tasks later on maybe if we have projects we will assign uh, the task to a project id or we will complete the task or toggle this complete behavior and so on and so forth so uh, let's have a look if things are still looking good for us on the browser they should because our tests are passing if the browser breaks while our tests are passing then there is something wrong with our tests right but no everything seems to be fine and now here I can create again with the same description and if I go up you see that the error with the duplicated key is actually gone which is really good um, the create task component we don't need to worry too much about it anymore this actually here I would just do a little bit of refactoring and I'm gonna call this task title right so here the on submit um, I'll simply pass the task title and um, this component doesn't need to have I think yeah it's, it's debatable I'm not gonna make a decision on whether this component should have knowledge about how to create a task with a new task and so on um, or if this is this responsibility but I don't think so because um, this component just needs to export whatever information we need to create a task because okay that's a good argument actually um, the thing is we don't know whether um, this task here is actually going to be created now in JavaScript or if it's going to be sent over the network, right? If we pass an object, clean object, um, then not a class, so just a, an object key value pairs, um, then we can pass things over the network very easily. Um, so we don't want to create a full blown task here. We just want to give the information and let the on submit function take care of creating the task. Okay, um, cool. Now there is still a problem here. <laughs> um, and here you see that we have some knowledge. So the tasks component here, it actually has knowledge about how to um, store tasks. If I want to move away from the use state, then I need to come here and I need to change that. Is there a way that we could actually um, completely isolate this component from changes on the storage? And the answer is there is. So we're gonna try to do it now. Let me have a look just where, perfect, yes. So, um, now let's start by creating a new file and we're gonna actually define a custom hook. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna call this data stores and data stores is a general name kind of. And the, 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 the idea here is that I'm gonna use, I'm gonna define multiple data stores as this app evolves. And um, we're gonna have one use state data store. Um, one maybe the, over the network or the context or the, uh, I don't know um, some some central store like Redux or something I don't know if I'm gonna do that but um, you get the idea I will just add the custom hooks here and I'm gonna start with the first one use tasks store this is very straightforward um, I'm not mentioning anything about the use state here and I thought about it, whether I should do it, but um, I couldn't find a good name, so I'm gonna abstain from that. Let's export a constant here, and this is gonna be use tasks store. Now, in React, the use, whenever you restart a function with the name use, then React expects it to be a React hook. This gives you some nice features. It allows you to call other hooks inside of this function, or inside of this hook, and maybe we should actually talk in detail about hook hooks in one of the upcoming videos could be yeah that's that's a nice uh, maybe I could could write it down always make notes uh, pa, pa, pa. talk about hooks right perfect um, the idea here is that I'm gonna isolate this use state 
behind a nice stable interface. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy this from here and I'm gonna paste it here. And I'm gonna export a nice object, nice looking object, which is gonna have our data. The data is the tasks. And I'm gonna have a method called create task, which we'll receive here as a task title, a string. And, oops, what did I do here? And then I'm gonna do, and what's the, what's up here? Ah, not export, sorry, return. Um, and then here, what I'm gonna do is, I will simply say set task. So the exact same thing that I have here, set tasks with the task title. Okay, so this allows me to actually have a nice um, behavior here. Um, the on submit is a promise, so I'm already passing it here. Um, now what I can do is I can just define this very nice. So type a tasks store for me, and this is gonna be the interface I'll try to stick to. I'm gonna try to change this interface as little as possible. So I'm gonna have a data that is composed of tasks and I have a create task, which receives a task title that is a string. And here we could actually also return a promise void, right? So also work with um, promises as much as possible to get used to it. Um, and this task store should be actually returned here, right? Now this is gonna break because this is not a promise. So how do we do that? We just wrap it up with a promise. And that's my executor. This is gonna allow me to close things up. I'm gonna have a resolve here. And then once I'm done adding, I'm just gonna call resolve with undefined. All right, I save this. And then we get uh, the error here because this new promise is not a promise void. What I can do is just type it as void and that should be happy or no? Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, this should be outside. This should be outside like so. Okay, now it's happy. Yes, and here I don't need to type anything. Perfect, so now I have a data and a create task method, right? Now this allows me to come here in my test component and actually completely isolate this by using the methods that I expose here. So now if I have this like so, then I have access to the data and to create task. And then here, what I need to do is the on submit function. Everything I need to do is simply to call the create task with the new task title. And we're already good to go. And here then I need to pass the data. Right, I saved this. There is some TypeScript lingering here. I'm just gonna remove this unused stuff. Not TypeScript, this is actually ESLint. And let's see if it's passing. Pass, 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 pass. Woohoo! Okay, cool. Um, you see now how much more beautiful it is, um, at least from my perspective, right? Uh, later on, we would actually start adding a few things to this to this interface, um, and we can actually think like maybe we can try to make an exercise of asking ourselves: Is this really is is this really an abstraction? Right? Doesn't seem to be, or doesn't seem to me as an abstraction because this is really coupled and directly related to the concept of a task. Um, is it possible to derive some abstractions from these things? How, how can we, because I honestly, I found that um, defining the right abstractions is actually harder than you may think. We think we get it right out of the box. Ah, yeah, let, let's define some abstractions here, create a type, and then we have an abstraction. That's not true. A type is not an abstraction, okay? An interface is not an abstraction. These are two different things. And it's very easy to confuse them. And, and this is maybe something that you should, you should uh, try to develop a nice good feeling for it. How do you 
identify the abstractions from the components. I'm not in I'm not entirely satisfied with the solution here. I'm not entirely satisfied with this type or with this interface, whatever you want to call it. Um, you can also use an interface here, right? So that, that's not going to change anything. Interface, and there you go. That's fine, uh, works just fine. And in interfaces, it would normally have only public methods. That's why this is a little bit confusing for me and that's why I use types, but in general, uh, they work virtually the same way. There are differences, small differences, but you shouldn't obsess over which one you should use. Um, cool. So let's have a look if everything is working fine on the browser. Yes, everything is working fine on the browser. Still no problems here. Um, our components much cleaner. Right, so now we have a, a component that brings everything together and orchestrates this communication, but it is agnostic. It's completely dumb about what is the implementation of the tasks store. If this comes from a, a context where we pass the actual store, this would be the best implementation. Maybe we could aim for that near or soon in the future. Um, but all it needs is this little interface and then we can extend, we can use whatever store we want as long as it obeys, as long as it um, follows this interface. Okay, um, much better. Now, last thing I want to do is I just want to actually wrap this up into a maybe nicer component. <laughs> uh, that's from Material UI because the styling is really bothering me. Oops. And I just want to have a CSS baseline here. And the CSS baseline is going to give me a little bit better. You see now the font changes a little bit nicer. Maybe I could, um, I could also, what is that? Is a container? Not sure, but I could use a container and um, then set this uh, max, max width to, let's say, LG. Is that going to work? Yeah, I think so. Okay, cool. So now I have some margin, right? Then I don't need the, the React here or the fragment. Just gonna save this just to have a little bit of, of styling. Let's just start working on the styling a little bit, right? It's better. Um, we'll continue with it in the next video. And I think that's it, actually. I think, I think, I think we should know how to stop, where to stop. I should know when to stop uh, because I could continue going. Um, the tests are too bad. Uh, uh, the tests are too. <laughs> the tests are still passing, uh, which also gives us a nice, nice safety net to do some styling changes, which we will continue in the next video. Um, cool. That's what I had for us for today. Hopefully you had fun. I think refactoring is really cool because um, you could really experiment with ideas and you can try solutions. You can try moving things around um, to improve the design of your code. Of course, there has to be a goal, right? It's just not for fun. Uh, there, there should be a goal that you want to achieve with this uh, refactoring. And but, but the fact that you have tests and the fact that you have type checking allows you, gives you a way, way bigger safety net that allows you to, to do the refactoring with a mu much more confidence. Okay. Last thing, let's just commit everything. And you'll see that there's a lot of stuff to commit actually, but I think I touched a lot of places. Um, just going to commit everything and let's, let's have a look. Okay. These are the dependencies. Yes. I want to add. Yes. I want to add this is in the package. Sure. 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 This is the changes in my app. I want to add this. That's a little change in my functions. New task, test.map, sure. Also want to add, also want to add, also want to add. Perfect. Git commit, refactor, finish. Um, what was that? Refactoring, yeah, of course, the finish splitting up the tasks component, right? I mean, if you wanna, if you wanna have a nicer name, you would say modularizing, finished modularizing the tasks component, right? It looks nicer on the git commit message, 
would seem like you're an expert. I mean, hopefully, yeah, we're all aiming at becoming experts. So I can push with confidence now. Let's have a look at our Git um, repository and let's see how long that's going to take. So it should be here. Yep. And let's see, hopefully today Git's not gonna, not gonna break like it did last time. So let's just have a look and wait for a couple of minutes. Meanwhile, we can just enjoy the music. And if you're joining now, just a quick, um, yeah, we're almost done. I mean, we're just checking the, the CI pipeline. If you um, want to check the video, it was actually really cool. So I recommend you to, to watch it. Um, also about, about Thursday, I'm going to try to prepare some, some nice discussion about how React works behind the scenes. Um, that will give a lot of context for many of the things we'll discuss in future videos. Okay. So it's also nice. Um, it's also a nice, 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 nice video for you to check out. And we're almost there, almost there. Just running some checks, which should pass because they are pre-commit checks as well. So uh, pa, 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 let's close everything. Nice. Just gonna run the tests. And eventually we'll actually start adding some end-to-end -end tests. By the way, um, one of my mistakes in the, I think the first video was about the missing the production flag here on the deploy Netlify. And that actually deployed the draft environment, which just got me thinking, okay, maybe I could deploy a draft environment for end-to-end -end tests, right? And deploy a draft environment, uh, get this draft environment URL as the output of this step and then um, call the end-to-end -end test with that URL. That would be really cool because we would test in a real production-like um, setup. So maybe we're going to do that, right? Sounds like a nice idea. Uh, we can test if everything was um, correctly deployed. There you go. Yes, we are in production and we have the new style changes. So it seems to be working just fine. Perfect. Um, let's end for today. Oh, I was not sharing my screen. Um, okay, hopefully I made myself understandable. I don't need to repeat everything, I think. Uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah. Um, bottom line is if you want to have a look at my desktop here, uh, I can just open whatever I close it first. Yes, we are in production. And if I just test it here, we have the new styles and everything. Um, so all the refactoring was done in a safe way, website still working. And later on, we will have a look at how we can use this draft environments from Netlify because I think they deploy something like this, for example. I don't know if I can use that. What happens here? Yeah, so they deploy this kind of environments, right? Um, and, and I could probably use this to run the end-to-end -end tests and pass this as a URL. And then the end-to-end -end tests using Playwright, for example, or I don't know how it 
exactly would work with Cypress, but with Playwright, you just pass a URL to it and it's gonna execute a lot of stuff that you define in the test. So we could pass a draft production URL and that could actually be a nice way of testing our um, running end-to-end -end tests before actually deploying to the final production environment. Okay, just some thoughts, some comments. And it's eight, so again, one hour and a half. Uh, I don't know how to make this shorter, but if you have any ideas, just comments. Um, I'll see you on Thursday, hopefully. Thank you for staying with me for, for today and hopefully it was a helpful and instructive video. I'll see you then and have a nice week until then. Bye-bye.